Okay, for your lab this week, you guys have to analyze data that you've collected by finding the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error. And I wanted to show quickly how you can do this on Excel uh, super fast. So I have the mean, standard deviation, and standard error for all this data that I have here and I have a chart. And I'm going to show you how to make that as fast as I can. Okay. So as a requirement for the lab, you have to show your work for calculating one mean, one standard deviation, one standard error. You do not have to repeatedly show me all of your work for each of the calculations. The statistical analysis of probability information is found on the AP appendix number one that you're allowed to use on the test. And so I copied a piece of it here and it has three of the things we're gonna to use today. So mean, everybody should know how to find the mean. I'm using the five centimeter distance here in the data that I have. So I add up all the different samples. These are distances of a route from a water source where the water source is five centimeters from the original germinating seed. I divide that by the sample size, which is five, and that gives me three. In Excel, the quick way to find the average mean is to use this button over here, auto sum, and choose average. Make sure that you are selecting the correct data. It actually selects the five up there because it recognizes that as a number. So we're gonna select D4 to D8 and click enter. You'll see that's the same number as I got. For standard deviation, you have to find the difference between the mean for each data point, square it, then sum up all those differences. So I took 2.5 minus three, the average squared, plus 2.1 minus three squared, plus 3.5 minus three squared, plus 1.2 minus three squared, and then lastly, add in 5.6 minus three squared. Divide them all then by the sample size minus one, as shown here, and then find the square root. And I get with two sig figs, 1.7. So to do that on Excel, we go equals standard deviation, the sample, that's the calculation, sorry. Did that incorrectly, standard. Select it. And then you select your data and click enter. So you'll see it equals 1.7, the same as I calculated. Then lastly, you have to find standard error. Standard error is really our standard deviation of our sample divided by the square root of the sample size. So 1.7 divided by the square root of five equals 0.76. So to do that in Excel, you, I'm gonna use the standard deviation that I already have. So that equals, in this case, the cell D10. And then I'm going to divide it by the square root of the sample size. Now I could just type in five here, or I could have it count for me the sample size. So I'm going to do that. Enter. So it gives you a 0.75. That's because I rounded for this 1.7, but the standard deviation value that the standard error is giving here is not rounded. By the way, my numbers here are already formatted so that they are giving me the correct number of digits. Otherwise it'll give me a huge number of digits. So I actually clicked format cells and I changed the decimal places to one for the first two, and for this one, I clicked format cells to change it to number, and click two decimal places. Once you put in the information for one, if your data is set up correctly, if you drag on this little corner piece right here, actually, if I drag this whole piece right here, I'm gonna drag the corner over, it will automatically fill in the data, all the standard errors and standard deviations in the correct place. So that should be very fast. Okay, next you have to make a graph. So I'm gonna go to insert, and then you want to use a scatter chart. 
The reason why you want to use a scatter, chart, a scatter chart instead of a line graph is because of what it does to the x-axis. If you notice on my x-axis, I'm going to have the distance from the root source is 0 to 2 to 5. There's a difference here of 2, but there's a difference here of 3. If I use a line graph, it's going to separate this out evenly. But that's not what should be on the graph. These should be closer to each other. These should be farther away from each other. 0 to 2 should be closer. 2 to 5 should be farther away. Okay, so we're going to graph just the means. So I'm going to select a scatter. Okay, and you will see right now it has selected the data points as just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has not picked 0, 2, 5, 7, and 10. So I'm going to right click on that, collect, I'm going to click select data. Then I'm going to hit edit. And I'm going to select my series X values, which are right here. And I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll see they're in the correct place and they have the correct numbers here. Okay, the other thing I want to mention really quick is there are no labels on either the X or Y axis. So make sure you add those. So you go to axis, add chart element, axis titles, primary horizontal, and then primary vertical. And you edit those to label what are on the X and Y axis. Finally, you need to put standard error on here. And a lot of students make the mistake. They click error bars, standard error, and then they're like, oh, I'm done. Uh, so what you actually have to do for standard error bars is you have to edit the standard error bars. Now, first of all, I don't need standard um, X error bars. So I, since I don't need those X error bars, I selected them and I'm going to click delete. Then I'm going to select my series Y error bars. And right now they're just at a fixed distance. I need to actually use my calculated standard errors for them. So I go again, just want to show you that again. I go to here, error bar options, series one error bars, click that. Then I select custom. I click specify value and I select my standard errors across. And for the negative error too, I'll also use the same standard error. Click OK. Now you'll see my standard errors have a different width around them. So the zero, there's no standard uh, error there because they were all zero points. The distance two centimeters has a really tight standard error. And then these have very similar 0.75 to 0.85, but they are now set up differently. Okay, so that is how to use Excel quickly to find mean standard error, standard deviation, and then graph standard error correctly. Have a great day, guys.